Throughout the years of running this channel, one of the questions that keeps coming up is, does hyperbaric oxygen actually help people with their skin? Does it help with skin complexion? Does it help with skin elasticity? Is this something we should be considering for somebody who's looking to improve the quality of their skin? And that is what we're gonna cover in today's video. Real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in-person. We have a few in-person courses coming up over the next few months and registration is closing soon. So head over to hbotusa.com forward slash events and secure your spot today. When it comes to aging and aesthetics, quite honestly, most people are looking for quick fixes. Certain therapies, modalities, tools, injections, lasers, therapies and modalities that have very fast, almost immediate impact on your skin, your skin tone, your skin complexion, your skin elasticity. And if that's what somebody's looking for, hyperbaric is not that. On the flip side, we do see a tremendous amount of patients coming through our clinic or of the clinics that we support all over the world, reporting improvements in their skin, their hair, and their nails after a series of treatment. So is hyperbaric actually helping those tissues? And the short answer is yes. So what do we know about why hyperbaric may do this? Well, we know that some of the mechanisms of hyperbaric include collagen synthesis and fibroblast activation. And so we're getting increased activation growth factors that are gonna stimulate collagen and the soft tissues. And so where there is scar tissue, where there is some injury and some swelling, where skin is starting to show signs of damage from either long-term sun exposure or post-surgical or even just the aging process in general. Collagen synthesis, stimulating collagen synthesis, is an amazing tool to use to really literally reverse that process. Now, I said earlier, if you're looking for a short-term fix, this is not that. And the reason I said that is because collagen synthesis and fibroblast activation is something that takes many, many sessions. I would say 20 sessions would be the shortest period of time, but that's just where it begins to occur. It's really the 30, 40, 50 hours of treatment over two, three, four months where you're really going to see increased collagen synthesis at the rate that somebody might be looking for from an anti-aging standpoint. A lot of the patients who come to us, maybe they come with condition that we're trying to support some of their other signs and symptoms of inflammation, like autoimmune diseases, or even consequences of cancer treatment, like long-term chemo consequences or long-term radiation consequences. And one of the things that patients will report is increase in the thickness of their hair or the speed of their hair growth, increased thickness of their nails and the increased speed of their nail growth, and then certainly increase in the quality of their skin, improved complexion, reducing or clearing of certain rashes, increased skin elasticity, and to some extent, reversal of other signs that they've seen on their skin from the aging process. And the reason behind that is this collagen synthesis and fibroblast formation and activation. All of these growth factors moving into the area, healing, regenerating, and repairing the skin, the hair, the nails, the tissues that require an enormous amount of collagen support. Now, if somebody was really looking for a, a solid program from an anti-aging or, or skin approach, I might suggest combining some of these therapies. In other words, we know that there's enormous benefit of a variety of different lasers that treat skin and improve skin function. We know that there are other supplements like collagen supplements and other amino acids and antioxidants that will support skin health over time. In addition to specific lasers, other photobiomodulation. We know that red light, near infrared and infrared light have amazing effects on our skin, but as do violet lights for other reasons, green lights for other reasons. And so using photobiomodulation for improved skin should absolutely be considered as part of somebody's anti-aging and skin routine. So combining the right supplements, combining oxygen for its collagen synthesis, and along with photobiomodulation or, or other laser techniques, and really putting together a full package program is going to be able to elicit changes in this person's skin from a variety of different angles, supporting a variety of different underlying issues to really improve this person's skin long-term. 
from a hyperbaric standpoint, what does a protocol look like? Again, this is not a short-term effect. This is a long-term effect. So this is another one where we're looking at a minimum of three hours a week, preferably four or five hours a week for a minimum of 20 hours, if not more like 30, 40, or 50 hours. So this could be three to five hours a week for a span of about 10 to 12 weeks. And while probably almost any pressure would stimulate a lot of these responses that I'm talking about, most of the studies done on collagen synthesis and fibroblast formation have been done at higher pressure. So 1.75, 2.0, 2.2 would be the range of pressures that we would typically choose if we're trying to have an optimal effect on those mechanisms of action. So hopefully this helps answer the question of can hyperbaric oxygen help you improve your skin? And if it does, what would those protocols look like? As most of you know, I've been teaching and certifying people in hyperbaric medicine for the last few years. What was missing was a concise textbook on the off-label use of hyperbaric oxygen. There are a handful of textbooks out there. They're all exclusively on the 14, which are now 15, FDA-approved hyperbaric indications for hyperbaric use. There is not a single textbook out there on the off-label use, and most importantly, not a book that really goes into the detail of the mechanisms of action. You've seen my videos on mechanisms of action. You understand how important that is to me for you so that you could really understand where hyperbaric fits in this vast world of chronic illness. This book, The Art and Science of Hyperbaric Medicine, is just that. It is the official textbook that will go along with all the courses that we teach, but it's also a standalone book. If you're looking to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen, more about the indications, the contraindications, the off-label use, the mechanisms of action, this is the book that you're really gonna wanna get your hands on. So click the link in the description below and grab yourself a copy today.